man joining us now is Michael Miller from churchmilton.tv News Roundup. How are you, Michael? Good. How about yourself? Very good. Very Now, just so people know, Rebecca is also doing the news here at churchmilton.tv, but some of you may recall last week she was feeling kind of out of it, and she's actually been sick the whole week, and she just came back with today's what, Wednesday. She came back to work yesterday. So we decided, because we're cool guys, not to put her through the stress of having to sit here and do this right now. Yeah, yeah. We said, go home, have a nice evening, relax, but you're in the hot seat next week. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Don't let, don't let her rest too long. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about uh, the Pope. Now, we're going to skip over right now in your segment. We're going to skip over the Pope's interview stuff because... We have an entire back half of the show dedicated to all of that. But you have other Pope news now, don't you? Yeah, yeah. The Pope is all over the place. Um, the, the guy is just tireless. Uh, the first thing that we encountered in the news this week was the excommunication of an Australian uh, priest. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's Father Greg Reynolds is the man's name. Uh, he was laicized and then excommunicated for uh, a couple of offenses. Uh, he... Uh, he broke Canon 9, 751. Um, it's, let's just be specific instead of listing you canon law. Um, he taught uh, heresy in, turn, in terms of women ordination. Uh, he, um, he publicly celebrated the Eucharist when he didn't have the faculties to act publicly as a priest. He supports the gay community. I mean, there's, there's just a laundry list of stuff here that the guy was, was guilty of. And so the Pope found it was the proper action to, to excommunicate him. Do we know how long uh, this particular case was going on, or did he just do something in the last month and the Pope said, that's it, you're out of here? No, no, this has been going on for uh, a little while. I know that um, it, back in 2010, uh, the Australian media had reported that he was devoting his homilies to um, it being God's will that women should be in the priesthood. Mm-hmm. So we know it goes back at least that far. Uh, my guess is probably even further. Yeah, sure, sure. But- who knows when the first formal charges were brought against? But you know, the three years is that's that's pretty quick in the uh, uh, as far as the church affairs go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Another pope story. What's the next pope story? Well, um, you know, today uh, the pope was talking about uh, the the um, the amount of Christians being martyred right now. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's a constant thing, but um, recently in Peshawar, Pakistan, there were 85 Christians killed. Um, and now these are Anglican Christians, just to be specific. But his general sentiment was that we need to sort of um, be more united with our, our brothers and sisters in the Lord across the world who are, who are suffering and dying for the faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's just calling on Christians. And there's some, there's some really interesting numbers here. Um, 80% of all acts of religious discrimination in the world today are against Christians. Um, this according to the International Society for Human Rights in Frankfurt. Um, it just makes you kind of stop and, and uh, kind of chew on that a little bit. That's 100,000 Christians each year is what it comes down to. So um, the Pope yeah. just wants us to kind of focus a little more on being united with, with them and their suffering. Yeah, that's a, it, it's a point that's missed, obviously, by much of the Western media that you know likes to you know, paint this great big Christophobic, uh, or I'm sorry, this uh, big, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, anti-culture, you know, anti-human sort of depiction or caricature of uh, of Christians and specifically Catholics. Right. And uh, you know, that's interesting. I was at a conference this weekend in Wheeling, West Virginia, and one of the terms that kept popping up all over the place, which is why it just came out of my mouth by accident, is Christophobic. Mm. Uh, that there's so much of the world is actually now kind of it's, it, they they have a fear of Christians because of the way the media, you know, the entertainment media and the news media just keeps portraying them. So that's right. And then you go behind, you know, to some of these, uh, you know, countries where, you know, the generally speaking, it's Islam rules the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it is. Uh, uh, it's, it's not an easy time to be a follower of Christ right now. No. And it's it presumably only going to get worse. So yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like it. Yeah. Next story about the Pope. This is like the Pope rundown. I know, I know. And I could have pulled another 20 if I wanted to, but uh, these are just the ones that I thought would be the, the quick hits. Um, the European Parliament's going to be inviting the Pope to speak, um, possibly uh, by the end of this year. And uh, it, it's one of these things, I think they do it usually as a courtesy, you know, invite a, a Pope to speak. The, the past... Um, predecessors of Martin Schultz, who's the current president of the European Parliament, they've invited Pope Benedict to speak, and he's he's declined. Um, you know, he was probably busy or in ill health or something, but something tells me, this is my own personal opinion, is that uh, Pope Francis might take him up on this one. That'll, been, been, that'll be interesting, you know, as many people, you know, may or may not know, the European Parliament, uh, you know, in the sort of the forming of the Constitution, European Constitution, just wrote God out and just sort of 
skipped right over that whole 2,000 years of history of you know of, you know of Christendom and settling the barbarians and all of that. So it is. Uh, It'd be interesting to see, you know, if he does in fact take him up on it. It'd be interesting to see, like, you know, what message does he take to them? Right, right, and and that's, um, I don't know, anticipated. I think by the end of the year. So yeah, we'll we'll keep our ears uh, open for that one. All right, and then, one one more to go. One more to go, and uh, this is just about the upcoming what they're labeling it as the G8 summit. Yes, uh, and that's the gathering of the eight cardinals that the the Pope has uh, sort of named as his advisory board. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's coming up this October, and. So the the blogosphere and some of the um, Catholic news outlets are just sort of starting to talk about this. You know what what are they going to be chatting about? What are they going to determine? And um, one of the things that I think they want people to keep in mind is that um, you know there probably won't be any major decisions coming out of this first meeting. Sure. Um, just because this is the first time they've done this, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, they do have some topics that they've decided on, like. Um, pastoral care of those who have been divorced, you know, how do we, how do we handle this, uh, especially how, you know, f- the issue of communion, um, you know, and they'll be talking about curial reform as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Meet, so. The meeting is in Rome? That's correct. The meeting is in Rome. Um, well, that'll be an interesting little set, uh, situation there because, you know, as you know, when everything happens in Rome, you have the official and then you have all the rumors and the gossip and everything else that comes out. And sometimes there's a little bit more truth over here than there is over here. Right, right. <laughs> So you keep know, a, keep an ear to the ground on this one. Definitely. Excellent. Michael, thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, everybody, stick around with us. When we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, is Fox News really going gay? We'll be right back right after this. This season, the, the series of 13 uh, episodes, programs, will be concerned with uh, the principles and uh, advantages that we derive from St. Thomas Aquinas and the Summa Theologica. Why is it useful for people to uh, look at this? Because Not because there's anything original that Mike Forrest and I are doing. We're just retailing. And what we're doing is retailing the truth about creation, about the human person, about God, uh, and about morality and how you form moral judgments as we find them in the magisterium of the teachings of the Catholic Church, and especially as we find them in the teachings of Thomas Aquinas. And the Church has incorporated Aquinas into its teaching of Christ. And it's, so much of this is, is lacking today. Uh, and uh, that's what we're trying to do, is to uh, lay it out in a short and simple format so that you can, uh, you can think about it and pray about it. 